Should should. Coach, oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, no, you can go. Ahead. Let's start off generic. Coach, it was a very competitive game. Uh, just uh, your thoughts on that uh, opening game? Well, I'm pleased we're out there. You've got to you've got to understand. Australia and New Zealand have had a Constellation Cup, five games. England came in, they played New Zealand for three games, they played Australia for three games. England played Jamaica. We played ranked 13 and someone ranked about 35. So our diamond challenge has to be a better quality for the team to actually pick up the pace. Now you can see in that second quarter, <coughs> and even then, our hassle rating, when we were able to get on top like and make New Zealand really work the ball, we had them going, and that's what I'm after. Um, these players dipped, and went down to six the Commonwealth Games. I've got a lot of work to bring them back up. I don't know who said it on the TV, but they, when they were talking to me about, oh, how are you going to handle in the third quarter, the <coughs> Newick, the big shooter, I said, well, if you can give me a defender six foot, six foot eight, mm -hmm. I'll put her on the court, but we don't have one, right? So you are virtually got to do the workload before it gets down there. And I'm not disappointed in the team because I, I know where they sit. They still didn't lose by 35 and 55 goals, which is what they used to do when I first came in. Um, got that down to two and three plus wins. So now we've just got to get that again. Um, eight of the players will go over and play in competition, uh, which is great. If Netball South Africa can get a quality competition here and not just, you know, an ad hoc one where they don't play all the time, they need like an Australian competition and New Zealand competition and what England do. 14 games plus finals, eight teams with the best players spread. You want to see South Africa start to stand up? That's when it will happen. We'll get them better, but at this stage, um, I'm not going to have eight of them for until end of June, um, but the rest we will keep working with <clears throat> because it's those bench players we've got to be able to bring onto the court and have more depth. As you can see, um, New Zealand put on the second team virtually in the second half. Um, bigger, bigger players again. Well, we're not. We don't have that luxury at the moment. Australia do, and so do England. So that's where we've got the development in South Africa. It's got to be really done. So I think I've probably answered all your questions. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to, right? <laughs> I'm, giving, I'm giving you the facts. Yeah. I'm not disappointed in those kids. I think, you know, they put it out like really well. To, and, you know, Fifi going into the centre in the last quarter, you know, like there's a bit of talent, you know. And I've got to feed them in and not put them in and like have them smashed in two minutes. You have to introduce so that they learn, learn to handle the pressure and what is pressure and how to then feed in the pressure. So we threw away a lot of cheap ball, uh, you know, into the hands. I was a bit disappointed in that with some of the more senior players doing that. But um, anyway, um, you know, it, again, when they haven't been out on the stage against them, it's very hard. You're always, you're always behind the eight ball when you're not playing the, the full hard competition all the time. I want to ask you about, you talk about um, experience with players. You must be happy though with, with Cara Pujuris. I mean, she played a full uh, match um, and, and she yes, came to really and well. Yes, we're still going to have to work with Carla because yeah. it did show on the catapult um, during trainings where she did dip and she was fatigued. So I did say to her, <coughs> she needed to talk to me if she felt, you know, she was dropping. You know, we could take her off for a while and then put her back out there. I mean, how fantastic is it to have her back? Yeah. We're, we're lucky there. But, yeah, she's she's nowhere near what she can be and and uh, neither neither she should be. You know, she's um, been 15 months away from the court and, of course, nine of those, you're running around with quite a large stomach. But um, 
oh, look, she's a class player, let's face it, and she would get better and better. There's no two ways about that. Um, but I, I think, um, like, uh, Nishale, um at goal attack, I think, um, good first half, but then got caught up in the second half, and that's experience again. You know, people said, oh, well, she won the player at fast five. Fast five, to me, is you got that much space, you can, you know, run a mile, no one will touch her. <laughs> um, that's what it is, fast five, but it's it's just space. <clears throat> well, that's not in the traditional game, all that space goes. But um, she will get better, and um, she's certainly got the speed, and um, she's not scared to go to the, to the post, but I guess she lost a lot of ball not being able to feed over the hands, and that's something... Uh, we've got to look at, and some of the choices were a bit disappointing, where we got a bit tunnel vision, but all that comes in training. You, you've got no idea how many hours we've got to spend on those sort of things to open it up and make sure they understand what can be cut off and what can't. And so, yeah. You mentioned um, in terms of the creating um, depth in the squad in terms of competitions, creating opportunities, experience, all those type of things. And I'm hoping not to put the cart in front of the horses now, but with competitions like this, obviously gaining experience. But with that time that you have between the Quad Series and the World Cup, what goes into planning with regards to the players in terms of player management, making sure that they, you mentioned earlier, game time and all those competitions? Well, unfortunately, that's where, as I say, South Africa haven't got it from. So, um, when we finish this, within a fortnight, the players that are not playing or got contracts overseas are coming down into Melbourne, where I live, and I've got some top competition against, um, like, Vixens, uh, the, or the SNN teams, and uh, a couple of top club sides that are uh, in the Victorian League, which are are just like the underpinning programs to the um, National League. So they'll get some good competition there. Uh, when they come back, they're back for a couple of weeks and then Nicole and I come in again. And that will be um, really just working, um, you know, tactical and technical all the time because that's what they've got to learn. But again, we won't have the competition. You know, we can get some people to play but the standard won't be like that and that's what Australia plays in every time they walk on the court you understand so that's what's got to be created you've got no idea how I come in and I see the talent here but it, it's really got to be worked and if I had 10 million bucks I'd give it to you to get that competition going but I don't um, because I really see what it could do um, for, you know, netball in the country. And you have players out there, I bet, at the moment that's got so much talent that we don't even see. So, you know, we do have um, El Marais, um, Vandenberg and uh, Nicholas Smith that are, you know, on rehab at the moment. Like, both of those have got fantastic height. El Murray, I think, could be an absolute world beater. I think um, Lucky Nipple's got it because if volleyball saw her, that they might run off with her. And so you really got to keep these players in the fold. Um, but both Nicola and El Murray will go to Leeds and they'll be playing under <coughs> Liana Leota, who is actually a former Silver Fern. Um, so I'm hoping they uh, are going to get some better coaching there. and. Uh, when they come back in the, for selection wise we we would seriously have to have a big strong look that they wouldn't miss out on this team so we've got strength we might be able to strengthen up more for sure and um, with that challenging oh, okay. oh sorry <laughs> just a quick one um, one will say you lost a lot of points in there at that session which is the dead round but yeah, oh, hang on a minute, I'm a little bit deaf, so... <laughs> I'm you know, sorry about that. Yeah, come on now, that'll be good. I'm saying one will say you lost a lot of points in the third session, which is the third round, and you came back very strong in the last uh, round. 
What is it, that one thing that you've said to the players that changed the mindset? And will you say the third round they were a bit nervous and that is why they made a lot of mistakes? Yeah, no, more, it was more so that um, uh, New Zealand came out with a totally different team. So all of a sudden you got to man up on something different. You know, what you've just got used to doing, which, as I say, um, that's why I know they can get better. Because you could see them after the first two, after the first quarter, and then the second quarter, we were really on the money. We were going with them, and then they changed their team again. So that's the inexperience of being able to adjust quickly and you know pick up what a new player defensively is doing on you. So um, yeah, I mean we started to get better towards the end of that third quarter. Um, but going into the last quarter, I thought we were able to pull a bit back then. So, as I said, it could have blown out. 20 goals, I'm not crying about it. I, I, as I said, I just know that the depth is there. With the, As long as we don't lose any major players, the, 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 main, the main players at the moment will get better just with competition alone overseas. Just a follow-up question. When I spoke to the president earlier on, she mentioned the fact that these games are more important for you as a head coach, um, playing against teams like New Zealand, like you mentioned, that they bring in a, a new team altogether that changes the mindset of the players. Will you agree that it will assist you better uh, come to the World Cup? See, I've told Cecilia that. That's why she's able to quote that to you. <laughs> <laughs> because it is. It's going to give me a gauge on where the, where the players sit in the big picture. You know, we're ranked fifth, don't forget that. That's one, two and three we're playing. And they've always had the, the you know, the brass and the gold and the silver around their neck. So um, what I've always tried to achieve, and I was so disappointed at World Cup when we only lost to Australia by two goals, we would have played in that gold medal match, is to show the players you're as good as anyone you play on. But... You, they've got to have the support around all that so they don't drop off. So it's there's the drop off at the moment. We're on the building phase back again, you know, very hard. Um, but um, I don't know, it doesn't worry me. I could tell you, I'll tell you a little story. There'd be a lot of coaches that wouldn't pick up the job because the win loss ratio might dip their um, percentage. Mine, I don't care. <laughs> if you know what I mean. I could name you four top player coaches that wouldn't come in and do it. There you go. But I love coaching and I love the development and I you know, I just see your players are there and they've got to just gotta learn the tricks. Talking about development, I just uh, last one more question, last one for me. Talking about development. Have you seen enough uh, t uh, uh, netball uh, taking place in schools? Are you happy with the progress? Or do you think maybe we should do more in terms of uh, making sure that we uh, do have these games? Yeah, uh, Cecilia knows, I keep saying, she's got to do more. She's got to, they've got, they've got to try and get, um, you know, someone like a sponsor, someone who can help finance a full-time National League. Um, I haven't seen, like, you know, we haven't been here. Uh, it's, it's two and a half nearly three years since I've handled the team. So, um, you know, I haven't even seen a telecom game. So we've come in, picked up the squad that's been basically selected, which I'm not disappointed in, but um, as I said, there might be other talent out there. Uh, and there's a couple of other players that um, got sick. Uh, Jamie... Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, I really liked her, but then she she got ill, um, and that's a lung complaint. So whether she gets comes back in March, I I would really like to see some of those players back in in the fold if possible. But um, yeah, I haven't I haven't seen any of the competition. That's because it's not being played as well at the moment. So I can't see what's not on. But also, as I say. It's up to um, Nepal South Africa as an organisation to fight to get that full-time league going. And what I mean by that, it has to be your best coaches on it. And you don't put all, you know, five of the proteas in one team. You're going to have to spread them out so the competition becomes competitive.